like this and yes yeah, so the first thing what is important for us is to actually uh, remove most of the unnecessary uh, edges for example we have here a lot of edges which is really not useful for us like these ones for example yeah and the best way to remove those is to use uh, a vertical selection here and with that uh, tool you can use a edit ver in the edit vertical tab there is a target weld option to just weld uh, verticals so basically we can uh, reduce amount of verticals to create a much more simpler object so this is important for a performance to create a less polygons on your model but to to save our forms to keep a form of your 3d object so basically our work over here is to connect all the verticals together to make those uh, amount as small as possible so the less amount of verticals the better performance but I, I, I'm not talking about uh, our work because we have here also yeah let's just check first how much polygons we have in our uh, model here to check amount of polygons you can go up again into the uh, viewport settings by pressing here on that plus button and over here there is a statistic tab and you can choose here amount of polygons amount of triangles amount of edges and so on so basically I prefer to use the triangles because most of uh, my clients for example use it the triangle count because the uh, and uh, most of the engines use it the triangle counts yeah and I use a total end selection here and uh, this checkbox should be turned on also to show the statistic in active view and apply so right over here we can see amount of uh, triangles of the total and this one is of the selected so basically this selected uh, object right now have uh, 62 polygons which is pretty much for just a box I suggest yeah so basically uh, our next phase of work should be like uh, optimization of the model to make it simpler yeah by reducing uh, poly count yeah so this thing it's not necessary for example if you have uh, uh, your own indie project but sometimes it's useful uh, actually it's always worth to, to just reduce amount of polygons because if you use uh, unnecessary polygons it's sometimes it could be not really good enough so yeah we have done with that wow let's see uh, over here we have uh, this wall actually going uh, inside of the second wall I would love to just uh, move these verticals from here to the end of that wall because if we will keep that way sometimes we will see some some kind of flickering 
yeah and to select a verticals uh, I recommend you guys to switch from the edge spaces to uh, how, how wireframe yeah so if you will use a F3 button you can s switch from the shape modeling to the wireframe with the wireframe you can see the verticals much more easily for example if we use the uh, edges faces viewport settings sometimes we could just select not all the verticals and it will give us a problems like that and we can just uh, not see every all of any of that issues and it will be uh, create a lot of problems in the future so basically if you want to move something better is to is to switch to wireframe with the f3 button and now you can just move your verticals like that yeah so this should be enough here we don't have this the same problem let's just check all the walls first how they will looks like yeah over here is the same thing with that verticals like this So here we have an interesting moment. Yeah, that we have uh, two windows connected with each other. Yeah. Basically, yeah, we, we could just uh, collapse these verticals here. It will be better than the target well because it, if you will just select two verticals and use a collapse they will be collapsed in this in the middle of those of the both verticals yeah and over here we need to also move all the edges in the center like this uh, hmm. yeah here is the same thing and the same thing over here uh, mm -hmm. so yeah basically that's all and right now you can see that we have only 288 polygons or not the polygons triangles so it's much better than 300 I, I guess and now uh, what I want to do is to connect all the walls together uh, let's attach those with this attach button so by pressing on the attach button you can just attach everything manually by pressing on that attach list thing you can just select all the objects which you want to attach with each other and press here attach button and now you can see that our walls is attached as a whole single object right now yeah now i can see some of the issues still still here yeah i will just finish with all that vertical connections verticals uh, yeah I feel like that that should be enough for us oh no here also one polygon over here and one polygon over here yeah Oops. Yeah, here is impossible because we have a connection here. Okay, so this should be enough. 
now we have uh, even less triangles yeah so basically that's all for this kind of uh, part of our work so we finish it with all the walls and now let's just uh, try to think what we could do with uh, the floors I would say that we could have a different type of floors in uh, different rooms for example in the kitchen and in the bathroom we could have uh, tiling and in the bedroom one and bedroom two and living room we could have a wooden floor for example yeah that that means that we need to just uh, we, we, we need to have uh, some cutted edges here to add different textures in the future so how do we start actually I will keep that uh, plan on the floor and I will just create a clone of that of that plan of that blueprint so if you just uh, press a right mouse button click and in the appearing menu you need to find the clone here by pressing a clone you will have a clone of your object and yeah here is another thing uh, when the clone option window will be appeared you need to take care to select the copy because if you will select the instance for example it will be copied as a instance which should be uh, the same as the previous one and also maybe it's a good time to show you how it works actually yeah so basically this is my floor let me just hide the plan the, the, this blueprint and I will just uh, put some gray uh, material on the floor to just uh, understand that this is my floor with the gray color and by pressing here I choosing the clone and for example if I will select the instance so I create a clone as an instance you, you can just understand that this is an instance by see here this editable poly is with the bold typeface yeah I will just move it over here and now if you will just change something here you can see that it will be changed it everywhere where you have uh, instances here yeah, like this and you can just create as many instances as you want it this is really useful for example if you work with the building uh, where you have a lot of windows here yeah, for example you can just use a instance and uh, create a, lo a lot of different objects with only one of those yeah it's really powerful tool for different type of works yeah but we I believe that we don't really need to work with that but I really love to show this thing to you guys because it's an amazing tool I use it everywhere where I need to have a lot of different objects so yeah this is our plan our blueprint and yeah, uh, it's uh, quite tricky to, to see uh, something behind it yeah for example if we will just put our plan a little bit uh, less than zero I mean like uh, you can see here that oops not this not this this Z axis is uh, if I will just move our uh, blueprint a little bit lower like this now when I select my floor 
and press alt x i can see through the floor and at the same time work with, with that so basically what i really want to begin with is to uh, split my actual uh, interior into two parts i will just remove these two edges and remember when you press a remove button when you select your edge you need to hold a control but button on the keyboard and only that only after that you need to uh, press left mouse button so the control and the left mouse button you can see that we don't have any problems here we just remove those edges here yeah but if you will just do only use the remove button and after that if you will switch to the verticals you will see that all the verticals actually is still over here uh, and you will need to remove those again manually like like that yeah so basically remember when you remove edges you need to hold a control button to remove edges with the verticals otherwise you will just see your verticals on the mesh so <coughs> yeah right now i have uh, some extra polygons here i will i will just use those to split my rooms into sectors like this and here you can see that if i will move that edge it will give me a diagonal part of the floor but i don't need to have this diagonal here uh, to fix that to solve that problem actually there is only one uh, one, one actual uh, one method to solve that you, you just don't really move that edge you will create a new one so basically you just select one edge have a ring selection connect like this and move it over here so uh, but uh, last lesson i have showed you uh, easier much simpler method to use a swift loop from that modeling window so if you open your 3ds max by default it will be like this so remember that you have a lot of uh, different interesting methods of modeling by using that ribbon so there is for example a swift loop yeah Let's use a swift loop to add uh, extra edges over here and also yeah but the tricky part is that the swift loop only works on the opposite of that edge on your model so if you have an edge and you will uh, aim your mouse button your ma mouse arrow on the edge it will be uh, showed how the actual next edge will go yeah like this or for example if you want to add some extra edge over here you need to uh, just press a mouse button like that so uh, my idea is to add also a small little uh, trend transition transitions between the different floors like we have in normal uh, houses here yeah, like some metal parts or I don't know what usual usually we have between the rooms yeah so sometimes actually maybe it's not really important because we will also put a frame for um, for the door but okay let's just keep it like that right now and it will be easier to work 
if you will have uh, connections uh, between the rooms like that so yeah and right now we have um, the floors for each room um, I will just use uh, different materials for those for example this one I will color colorize with the yellow color like this and I need to press here Oops. so uh, you can just uh, use the different materials from over here to selections like that yeah. and yeah and uh, I forgot that I press it alt X but what means that I use it the see through the model that's why my floors was not really visible yeah let's just add something uh, different from from the walls yeah it's easier to recognize so the tilings the tilings here shall be the tiling I will add this material this will be with bluish color like this yeah. uh, this room should have. let's give the same material as this one for example this this and that room should be the same wooden floor this is uh, okay let's check a plan so this is a kitchen kitchen could be the same as a toilet oops and for example i want to add a different material to the living room right now i don't know what kind of or it is but maybe it's wooden but with the different tilings Oops, the blue I already have let's maybe use a green yeah so right now we can see that we have a different type of uh, rooms with the different colors and now again we will just try to reduce amount of polygons just by connecting that verticals in the places where it's possible actually because for example we can't uh, connect this vertical here yeah it's possible yeah for us but it will not give a chance to us to use the different type of floors in different rooms so the first thing is to uh, have uh, different spaces for uh, different rooms here yeah? and only after that we can just start to think how to reduce amount of polygons like that so it's pretty simple but it's uh, it's a tricky because you always need to think a little bit for the future but this part could always be recreated it's uh, pretty simple to work with that and yeah that that should be I uh, you know here also better to connect with this one yeah so now we have a different floors and let's maybe start by doing a uh, windows i believe that windows it's simpler than the, than the doors yeah let's do first thing is this big huge window on the wall i'm not sure that it's actually possible to have this type of window at home and maybe i decided to, to 
to do that window just a little bit. Oh, you can see that I just selected wrong verticals. And now you can see that I just break my model like that. So yeah, let's do that window slightly smaller than it is before. Yeah, I will just I will just explain my uh, workflow right now. I will create the biggest window and after that I will clone that window in the other uh, holes. So basically, yeah. Let's start by adding here a new window. I prefer to use a box for that. I can just I just show it to you before if you will use your auto grid button your box will be connected automatically with with the edges which you actually aiming your your mouse button like this yeah you can see that for example if I will start to create something here it will be appeared over here so yeah let me just create a frame first so yeah right now it's not the same size I, as I could have I will just convert everything into polygons and maybe let's just let's just connect all the verticals to these verticals as you remember uh, to snap the verticals to another verticals you can use this snapping tool over here this free number and the magnet will be used for that and if you will press a uh, right mouse button click there is an uh, options for the snapping so I using the vertex as a snapping tool and now if I select all the verticals like that you can see that all my object right now is snapped to that vertical of the opposite uh, element but I need to uh, connect the verticals one by one here to, to have the same size of the frame of the window as a whole So yeah, basically that's all for now. I already have uh, the same sized box as a whole. And now I can just switch off the snapping tool and move it slightly inside like the real windows. They are usually inside the hole, not the same. Uh, not in the same part yeah, of the space so now I just add more uh, size to the Y coordinate here to make it a little bit wider and what we will doing next I think that I will just delete this and that polygons. Now I, I have the polygons which which is inside of the walls actually. And you can add uh, size of that frame by extrude those like this but you can see that this extrude works not as we actually want to then we can just switch over here to the polygons and yeah it, it will be extruded this way I don't like it again <laughs> so uh, sometimes it's a tricky one you just need to try different type of ideas how to add depth to your uh, 
frame for example here there is a tool called shell so the shell for me is the best tool to add depth to something what you add it so it could add the outer amount of depth or inner amount of depth like that yeah so now you can see that frame is almost done by just using shell let's just add uh, maybe uh, how, how much it is something like a 17 centimeters right, right now I think this should be enough for the frame yeah So, as I can imagine, the windows which we have, for example, here in the office, usually have not openable frame and another frame could be actually be more dynamic and could be have uh, some mechanism to be open it. Yeah. So yeah, basically I just, I just I forgot to explain what I have done here. When you use a different type of modifiers over here to continue to work with your model, if you agree with with the mesh which you already have by doing this shell, yeah, you can just use a collapse tool. That means that you accept that. Uh, that modifier and now let's convert everything into editable poly now I want to add more uh, more stride line over here on the window to add a dynamic part of the window yeah, to have a chance to open it yeah. So basically what I need to do here is connect all these edges which are selected. So I select these edges and just press here connect. Now I move it somewhere over here. Add a chamfer. Chamfer means that you will just add amount of you can uh, add a different amount of edges, for example, but I need, just need to add uh, only two edges from one, yeah, like this. Now I have uh, two polygons stride uh, on the opposite sides with each other, yeah. There is a different methods to connect these parts I prefer to use a bridge it's really useful because y when you use a bridge it will connect uh, the edges and it's uh, much simpler than connect the verticals so first thing what I need to do is to remove these two polygons over here this one and that one now for example I want to connect these two holes with each other I can do this by using a bridge so you need to select this edge and the exact opposite one if you connect these both edges you just use a bridge button over here to connect uh, these two edges with each other like that bridge bridge again bridge okay let me just hide everything and that's it actually I have a frame of the window I think that I, I could just scale down a little bit the size of this uh, part of the frame and now it's time to add the dynamic part of the window so yeah the first thing 
I want to remove these polygons which actually uh, place it inside the wall. We will never see these polygons and it will also reduce amount of poly count which is uh, good to reduce always in the every place where you're working on like that so if i will unhide everything you can see that i removed those polygons and i will never see what we will have uh, inside so yeah let's maybe uh, finish the first part of the lesson right now and continue in uh, 10 minutes or something because I see that it's already 1 p.m. yeah so yeah let's have a small uh, small pause right now and we will continue in 10 minutes yeah